Welcome to lesson 10 of programming using Visual Basic. In this lesson, we're going to look at counts, totals, and averages. We're going to identify and describe an algorithm, and we're going to explore the use of counts, totals, and averages when coding. So an algorithm is a sequence of steps needed to complete a task. One way of writing down an algorithm is by using pseudocode. It's like a computer program, but written in English. It must, however, display the structure of the program. So an example, a sequence of exam mask marks is input and terminated by a row value. The number of exam marks greater than 50 need to be output. This is an example of a counting program. Um, to count, we need to declare an integer value uh, or variable to to do the counting, but we must make sure it is initialized or started and, or set to zero. So the pseudocode algorithm for this is as follows. Counter equals zero. Repeat. Input. And then your mark. If mark is greater than 50, then increment counter by one. End if. Uh, until the end of the, uh, the data. Um, and output, and at the very end, you output your counter. The other way, as another one, is an example of doing total, is a sequence of prices is input. The total amount of the bill is to be output. To code this, you need a variable for the total, and the pseudocode for that uh, algorithm would be set the total to zero, repeat, input price, add price to total, until the end of the data, and then output the total. So again, you'd have your rogue value. Let's test this out. Let's see how this works. Okay, we're going to create a new Windows format. We're going to call this counts, totals, and average. And we are going to create a new window. And for this, I'm going to create a, um, let's just create a, add a button here. Let's just, and we'll add a label underneath because this is where we can then um, add our, We'll add two labels, one here and one here. Actually, let's add a text box. And put that in the middle. There we are. So we go say button. We're just going to do the default names for this one. So I'm going to say uh, text will be um, click here. Okay. Uh, and the label here will be um, the total number of exam marks over 50 are. Here we are, let's see, there we go. Okay, and then it will appear in this uh, text box down here. We're gonna double click on our button and we can enter it into this event handler here. So the start bit we want to do is we want to create a variable. So we'll call this counter and we'll assign the value zero to begin with. And uh, we are going to keep repeating it until we put x, x, x in. So we're going to use a do while. Do while. Um, we're going to say do while the, um, what we're looking for, exam marks. So we probably need another variable up here called dim exam marks. And we'll just say uh, we'll, we'll just say dim exam marks here. So do do while um, exam 
marks is not equal to x, x, x. And then inside there, we now will want to do our, um, we now want an input. So we want to take an input in here. Uh, so we need to have exam marks. And we're going to use an input box. And we'll say in this input box, enter an exam mark or x, x, x to exit. And then next we need a condition for this. If exam mark, not if exam marks, but if exam marks are greater than 50, then we want to increment the counter. So we want to take the counter and we want to take the counter again and then add one. And probably on here, actually, we probably say if Let's just copy and paste this. We probably could have an else here as well. So I can say else down here. In fact, else if, because I think this is quite a useful bit. Let's just take copy of that and paste that into there. So we could have an else if. So here we can say if the end marks is is equals to or not equals to um, if it's yeah we can say if it's not equals to here that like we had before not equals to x x x then we do another if in here. We just do another if, which will be within here. So we do another if. We have an end if down here, end in this. And then we need another end if down here, which ends this if. Okay, so if I run this now, Click, we can add 34, we get 56, that's 1, 45, 73, which is 2, 89, which is 3, 23, 98, which is 4, x, 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 and it should exit. Oh, something's missing. I know what's missing. We haven't displayed the count down there. So let's, when that loop has finished, okay, when it's finished, we now need to uh, have it displaying back in that, uh, in that text box down the bottom. So we need to have an output here. So we need to have text box one, because I've named it, equals, and it will be counter. Uh, and actually I should have said as integer up here I didn't say that dim as integer I forgot to name our things properly down here and text box should be text box dot text there we are so text box dot text equals counter so it will display it play it again let's add four numbers in here so click oh oh yeah because i've said as integer we need to let's just take that off let's say as 
string because of obviously if it won't work. Oh, it's in break mode, which is a pain. Uh, let's just stop that for a minute. Play that again. There we go. Okay, so if I do 43, 34, 32, let's add 98, 1, 2, 3, 4. So I've entered 4 there. So it should show 4 in the text box. Press Enter. Uh, and then it shows 4, which is perfect. Okay. So we've got that part. Next part, of course, we, we, we want to do is so that counts up, that increments. We've got count equals counter plus one. What about finding a total? Okay, um, we have, we've got counter, we've got exam marks here. What happens if we want total here? So, we need to create a variable called, let's have this called uh, dim total. So we create our variable called total there as, and we want to add a, we, do we want it as an integer? Maybe not. Maybe we want it as a, uh, a decimal. Um, so maybe uh, we want it as a, uh, a floating number or a, so let's have a, so looking back earlier, it, it is called a uh, single. Okay, so set it as single, which means you've got two decimal places. Um, and this type, so we've got, we don't need the exam marks this time, but perhaps we want to have a price as a string. Um, I'm going to leave counter there, but price as a string, if price is not equals to uh, x, then it will end. And then we can say price equals input, enter a price of an item or xxx. If price is not equals to xxx, then what we need to do here is basically take we want to add the price to the total now where we've got here we if i suddenly do this as price as total and we need to just say equals zero for this if total equals price add it equals total uh, because that's the uh, add price you will find at this moment an error will occur because we've got price as a string okay you then need to convert price to a number so i can say dot and if we go down here i can then find one that says to string so we've got to card to array to not to num not to string because two strings thing we want it to a a number here uh, actually maybe we do here Maybe I can put this down as a single as well. And then if price dot to string equals that, and then price equals input. See if do I have to enter this as something? So if price dot to string is not equals to x then total equals total plus price 
and then we want to just display back the total. And then I can just go over here and just change the total cost is like so. Let's just check if this works. I think it will come up with an error. So if I type 43.9988, uh, 12.99, 32.76, 43.50. If we put XXX, let's see if this works. There wasn't an error because it's allowing us to enter price, it's entering a number, but because it is, it's expecting that to be a text. So let's just go dot to string. Let's try that on here. If that doesn't work there. Let's just um, try that a different way here. So that should be price. So we could say price. What we could have is we get price one and price two, maybe. Um, so we could then say instead, let's say price. We could have another one here. So we could have maybe call this value, perhaps. And this is price. So price value will be a string. And that down here, we're looking at whether the value is equals to is not equals to x. We are storing the value as this. And if the value is not equals to x, okay, then we want to then take the price and then have the contents of value stored in price. And so if I press count this time, click, we enter some numbers, let's press XXX, see if this works, and it comes up with a total 6817, which is, which is what we want, okay? So that's perfect. And so that's how to do total now. Uh, the next part, of course, is if you want to do a, um, let's say you want to do a, uh, an average, there is no average function. So if you want to find the average, uh, the average in this, we need to then take the count and take the total together, uh, the the and put them together. So we've got the total here. We now need to use a the counter to then work out how many times this loops. So every time it loops, it will it will go up. Now, if I put my counter within the if, it's not going to probably work. Okay. So maybe we want to say. Um, we want a new variable. We've got counter already, which is good. Counter equals counter plus one. Okay. Do we want that one there? Perhaps not, because it might include, actually, that might include the XXX. Let's put that in here. Okay. So counter equals counter plus one. Uh, we've got counter zero. At this time, you've got total divided by counter, we should give you the average. So let's just play this. And if I put 25, 25, 25, x, x, x should give the average of 25 there we go 
Because 25, 25, 25, 75 divided by 3 is 25. Simple. So we just do a very simple one there. Your challenge. And we'll come back to this. Write a program for the, uh, using the skills you've just, I've shown you. Write a program for the, uh, for the examples that I've shown you, which inputs a sequence of exam marks terminated by row value. Program counts the number of exam marks greater than 50. So input 60, um, 60, 32, 41, 75, 88, 19, 27. The output should be there are four marks greater than 50. So a hint to increment a variable means to add one. So you can use counter equals counter plus one. Uh, next one is to write a program for the for using the examples I've shown you that calculates the total bill. Uh, so for example, prices 1020, 350, 210, total is 1580. Prices uh, 0 0.20, 0 0.75, 1.90, 2.30 gives you a total of 515. There's a hint there to have a look at. And then finally, the pupil wants to input all the exam marks and output the average mark. Can you write a program for this? You'll need to use the count and the total and the exam, exam marks, the example data is there to use. Good luck. I look forward to seeing you in the next video.